Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition to Cornerstone Online. Uh, not able to open the church up yet. In fact, I think we are the only county, Solano County, that is not in lockdown. Uh, so, uh, but we're expecting at any time the stay-at-home orders from Governor Newsom. So we're trying to deal with it the best we can. We're trying to follow the laws of the land, as Romans tells us. We're trying to follow God's laws, as the Bible tells us. And so uh, we're just trying to do the, the very best we can to keep you safe and well, as uh, the pandemic has uh, really hit a lot of people lately. Uh, some of you have asked where my sidekick has been. Well, he's here, he's been here, but I haven't brought him on camera, so I want him to say hello to you. So Michael, come on over here and come on in and and uh, look at the camera and wave and say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. All right, there's Michael. Okay, thank you, bud. Okay. Well, if you take out your Bible and uh, pencil and paper, uh, turn to Luke chapter 1. We're still there. And Christmas is almost here. <clears throat> we're, we're getting really close. And anybody got their Christmas shopping done yet? Well, I haven't either. So... <laughs> But uh, uh, we're going to rely heavily on Amazon uh, this year, I think. Uh, I, I saw a cute story. A couple were busy sh uh, in, in the, uh, in shopping in a busy shopping center uh, just before Christmas. The wife suddenly noticed that her husband was missing. And as they had a lot of shopping to do, lots to do, she called him on the cell phone. And her wife said, uh, his wife said, where are you? You know we've got lots to do. And he said, Oh, okay, well, you remember the jewelers we went to about 10 years ago and you fell in love with that diamond necklace? I couldn't afford it at the time, and I said that one day I will get it for you. A little tear started rolling down her cheek, and she got all choked up, and she says, Yes, I do remember that shop. And he said, Well, I'm in the gun shop right next door. <laughs> I believe that everyone would agree that Christmas is, as the song says, the most wonderful time of the year. And there are reasons behind that. During the month of December, um, everything focuses on this one event, uh, the issue of Christmas. All around the world, offices shut down on Christmas Day, stores shut down on Christmas Day. There isn't much traffic because everybody's at home on Christmas Day. When um, Christmas Day actually arrives, kind of everything shuts down. But what's so special about Christmas? Why does everything else become secondary uh, when we start talking about Christmas? Christmas, why? Because we've got good news. We've got great news. And uh, that news never changes. What's the good news? God's gift from heaven, Jesus Christ, came down to give us light and life. And I want to tell you today that God wants to light up your life on this Christmas. So I want, I want to make you the guarantee I made you last week, if you, if you were with us last week for the beginning of this series. If you'll listen for the next few weeks, and you'll think about what we're talking about, what the Bible says, and you'll open up your life to the light of God's love, you will enter 2021 with a new level of brightness and clarity and understanding that you never thought was possible if you'll just let God put his life in you. He wants to light up your life in a way that you could never imagine, uh, in a way that you never thought was possible. You know, all our lives we've heard about the three wise men at Christmas. But this year, if you were with me last week, you know that I'm talking to you about the three wise women of Christmas this year. You may have never realized but the, that, that there were three wise women, but there were. One of them was married, one of them was single, one of them was a widow. Every one of these wise women faced a major obstacle in her life. One faced a major disappointment. As she was old and un, uh, unable to bear a child. She uh, had been childless her entire life. Big disappointment. One had to face a major change. She's pregnant and she's single. How's she gonna explain that? One had lost the love of her life, her husband, just a few years into her marriage. Uh, so she had to deal with that kind of loss. So disappointment and change and loss 
were three things that these wise women had to deal with. But they overcame, overcame each one of those because they were wise. One overcame resentment and bitterness, one overcame her fears, and one overcame her grief. Why? Because they all made wise decisions by making wise choices. You see, what we're doing last week and up, up through Christmas is we're taking a look at the three decisions these wise women made. Because if you want to be a wise woman, if you want to be a wise man, um, we, need, we need to make these uh, exact same decisions this year and for the rest of our lives, really. The Bible says this about the wisest man who ever lived. You remember who that was? You're right, Solomon, okay. He was the king of Israel because God gave him wisdom. God said, I'll give you anything you ask for. But he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for comfort. Solomon said, God, I want you to make me wise. And he became the wisest man that ever lived. The Bible says this in, in 1 Kings 3, 38. The people saw that Solomon had God's wisdom by the decisions that he made. So how do you know when somebody's wise? How do you know? By looking at the decisions they make. Wise people make wise decisions. Foolish people make foolish decisions. Unwise people make unwise decisions. If you want to know um, if you're truly a wise man or a wise woman, all you have to do is look at the decisions you make. If I want to know if you're a wise man or wise woman, all I have to do is, is say, tell me about the decisions you've made in your life because our decisions reveal whether we're wise or not. An angel appears and says, I'll grant you whatever uh, the three blessings you choose, wisdom, fame, or $10 million. Immediately, the man chooses wisdom. There was a flash of lightning. He's transformed. Um, but then he just sits there staring down at the table. One of his colleagues whispers, you have great wisdom. W wisdom. Say something. The man says, I should have taken the money. No, no, no. Solomon asked for wisdom, and he never regretted it. Wisdom. So, okay. So first, we started with the first wise woman of Christmas, and her name is Elizabeth. We talked about Elizabeth. Verse 6 says, her life pleased God. And, and you know that as your pastor and your coach, um, that's what I want God to be able to say about you, that your life pleased God. Say about me that my life pleased God. That's what it means to be a godly woman. That's what it means to be a godly man. Your life pleases God. Now, Elizabeth wanted to have a baby all her life, and uh, it hadn't happened. So she had every right to become angry, resentful, and bitter. We talked about this last week. But Elizabeth, in her wisdom, she didn't get mad at God. Instead, the Bible says she never stopped praying. A wise person never stops praying. We also saw that Elizabeth understood the timing of God. The t God in other words, that God's timing was much better than her own timing. She understood what it meant to wait on God's timing. A wise person trusts God's plan and trust God's timing, even when it doesn't make sense to us, even when we can't figure it out. In many ways, the three wise women of Christmas were wiser than the three wise men of Christmas because they had been walking with God. All three of these women walked with God their entire lives. They walked with God, and they trusted God, and they were wise. Okay, now, let's move on to the second wise woman of Christmas. And of course, you know who she is. I've given you some hints. It's Mary. And we find her story in Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. So if you take your Bible and turn to, uh, if you already haven't turned to Luke chapter 1, turn to Luke chapter 1, and uh, starting at verse 26, starting at verse 26, it says this. In the ninth, uh, I'm sorry, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Now remember, Mary and Elizabeth are related, which means Elizabeth's having John the Baptist and, and Mary's having Jesus and they were cousins. They were cousins. In the sixth month of a Elizabeth, Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a town in Galilee to a young virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. Now the angel said, greetings. God has chosen you for a special blessing and he's with you. But Mary was frightened and confused. 
And now this is, understand, this is her initial reaction, fear and confusion. And she tried to figure this out, you know, what this greeting might mean that she's getting from the angel. So the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for God has decided to bless you in a wonderful way. You're going to have a baby, and he will be a boy, and you're going to name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and God will give him King David's throne. But his kingdom is going... His kingdom is going to last forever and, and, and ever until the end. How, how can this be, Mary asked. Since I'm a virgin, I've never known a man. The angel answered, God's spirit will come over you, and his power will overshadow you. So the holy child that you carry will be called the Son of God. For right now, your own relative Elizabeth is about to have a baby, even in her old age, because nothing is impossible with God. He can do anything. Then Mary answered, Well, I am the Lord's servant, and I accept whatever he plans for me. There's the key. I accept whatever he plans for me. May it happen as he says. This is surrender, guys. This is submission. This shows wisdom. So the angel left her. Then Mary got ready and traveled quickly to the town where her relatives, Zachariah and Elizabeth, lived. When Mary entered the home, she greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her baby leapt in her womb. And instantly, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Overcome with joy, Elizabeth explained in a loud voice, Mary, you are the most blessed woman on earth, and the child you are carrying is the most blessed too. But why? Why am I so blessed uh, that, that the mother of my Lord should visit me? The moment I heard the sound of your voice, Mary, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Mary, this is the key. You are blessed because you believe that God would do what he said he would do. Did you hear that? The key is you are blessed because you believe that God would do what he said he would do. Now Mary responded by singing her praise to God. My soul praises God, its greatness, and my spirit rejoices that he is my savior. He noticed me. Get that. Mary's so excited god noticed her he noticed me she said his humble servant girl and from now on all generations will call me blessed because of what the holy god has done for me so mary stayed with elizabeth for about three months and then returned home now you have to understand in those days men and women married very young mary might have been only 15 years old probably at the most 16 when, when she hears this news about getting pregnant and being, uh, and, and you can imagine she's filled with fear. Who wouldn't be? First, an angel shows up. That'd scare me, probably scare you too. But then what the angel said to her, well, that's even more scary. Mary, you're gonna be pregnant. You've never known a man and the daddy of your baby is gonna be God. And Mary's going, right, okay. <laughs> So imagine all the possible fears going through her mind. First, there's the fear of criticism. People aren't going to understand. People aren't going to believe me. I can just hear the gossip now, can't you? How am I going to explain it to Joseph, the man I love, the man I'm engaged to? Hi, honey, I'm pregnant, and you know we haven't had sex. How am I going to tell my mom? My mom, yeah, I know I'm engaged to to Joseph, but I'm pregnant, and Joseph isn't the daddy. Oh, and by the way, the daddy is God, and I'm carrying the son of God. Would your mother believe that? Pretty unlikely, teenage girl. Hi, mom, I'm pregnant, and God's the reason. How am I gonna explain that to my mom? How am I gonna explain it to all my aunts and uncles and sisters, my relatives? How am I gonna explain it to the whole community that I live in? It's probably one of the reasons why she immediately Uh, After she heard this news, she packs up and she goes to another town for three months to live with her relatives, Elizabeth and Zachariah. uh, Then she won't have to explain it to everybody because it's not going to make any sense to anyone. So there's the fear of criticism, but there's also the fear of the supernatural. Uh, Think about this a minute. She said, how am I going to get pregnant? The angel says, the Holy Spirit will come over you. 
overshadow you? Oh, okay, okay, angel. It's the fear of the supernatural. What's gonna happen to my body? How am I gonna get pregnant in this way? It's the fear of the supernatural. That would scare, um, that would be a scary thing for any woman, much less a young teenage girl. Then how about the fear of inadequacy? How in the world am I supposed to be the mother of the Son of God? I'm so inadequate. I don't have any schooling. I don't have any education. I'm just a peasant girl from a tiny village. Why me of all people, God? Maybe some queen or some really educated woman. So there's a sense of fear, a fear of inadequacy. Then of course, how about the fear of change? How in the world is this going to change my life? It's going to change your life. You know it will. She's engaged to be married. Do you know what an engaged uh, girl is thinking about? Nothing but her wedding. She's making all the wedding plans in her mind. I'm going to get married to Joseph, and we'll settle down, and eventually we'll have a family. But all of a sudden, a monkey wrench has been thrown into her plans. Her plans are now out the window. It's a major, massive change, and, and she's fearful about the whole thing. How, however, remember, she's wise. She's one of the wise women of Christmas. And in verse 37, the angel Gabriel says, Mary, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. So she's thinking, okay, I get it. God loves me. God chose me. God's with me. And nothing is impossible with God. Okay, I can handle this. Not because of my strength, but because God is with me. God loves me, and God has planned all this out. He's not going to overwhelm me with something I can't handle. Can you say that today? Do you have the faith and trust in God that he's not going to overwhelm you with something you can't handle? So based on the fact that Mary has faith, she knows nothing is impossible with God, and that God is going to help her and, and love her, Mary shows wisdom in this situation. Now, in the next verse, verse 38, she says, I am the Lord's servant. I accept whatever he plans for me. May it be according to your word. Guys, understand here, Mary wisely surrenders to the will of God. Have you done that yet? Have you, have you wisely surrendered your life to the will of God? If you haven't, there's a word for that, foolishness. It's unwise for us to go with our plan for our life when we know uh, uh, what God's plan is for life. When God who created us has a plan for our lives, we, we need to show the wisdom and go with that plan. Wise people say, whatever God wants for my life, I'm in. Did you hear that? Wise people will say, whatever God wants for my life, I'm in. I may not understand it all, but I'm going to say whatever God wants for my life, that's what I want for my life. That's what wisdom does. Mary wants God's will more for her life than anything else. She's like David in the Old Testament in Psalm 40. You know what David said? I desire your will, oh my God. Have you ever prayed that prayer? I desire your will, oh my God. If you would pray that prayer, I guarantee you, God will show you his will, your, his will for your life. Have you ever told that to God? God, I desire your will, not mine. Wait a minute. God, I desire your will, not mine. Do those, will, do those words sound familiar? How about Jesus when he's praying in the garden? And he's, the Bible says he's praying so hard, so diligently, he's sweating drops of blood. And he says to God, God, please take this cup from me. Jesus knew what was going to happen. He knew what he was going to go through. And he's praying God to take this cup from me. But then he says, not your will. Not my will, excuse me. Not my will, but yours be done. Guys, that's sh that shows wisdom. Jesus Christ showed wisdom when he said those familiar words. I desire your plan, not mine. I, de I desire to fill your purpose.
for my life, not mine. That's what wisdom does. And that's what Mary was praying. So we know that the wisdom of surrendering to God's will, God's plan, shows a mark of wisdom. The second thing we know is that, and Mark, write this down, Mary was a woman of the word. Mary was a woman of the word. She knew the word of God. She knew the scriptures. She had many scriptures memorized. I don't have time to read all of Mary's song uh, uh, that Mary sings spon spon uh, sp spontaneously at, at Elizabeth's house, but it contains about 10 references to the Old Testament verses. She knew this book backwards and forwards. So much so that she could create a song on the spot that quoted the prophet Isaiah and others in the Old Testament as well. Could you do that? Could you, on the spot, just sing some melody? It doesn't have to be in tune. doesn't have to be in pitch. Uh, just sing some melody based on scripture verses. Could you just start singing the Bible? That's why she was a wise woman. She knew the word of God. If you want to be a wise woman or a wise man, you need to know the word of God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, Mary quietly treasured these things, all that God had told her in her heart, and she often thought about them. Guys, that's the mark of wisdom. We think about what God says. We think about it over and over and over again. So here's the second key to being a wise person, a wise woman or a wise man. Mary was blessed. Mary was blessed. Write that down. Mary was blessed because she chose to believe God's word instead of her own fears. Do you see that? She chose to believe God's word instead of her own fears. And she certainly had a lot to be afraid of. But she said, I'm not going to believe my fears. I'm going to believe the truth about what God has said. Now in Luke 1, uh, 39 through 45, the word blessed appears three times, okay? It refers to the woman carrying the child, it refers to the child, and it refers to the one that believes God. Uh, blessing is given to all of these. Blessing comes from all of these. Blessing can be associated with all three of these people that we're talking about, the three wise women, okay? So now, uh, uh, the beginning of this passage tells us that Mary is on the move. Okay. She goes to visit her relative Elizabeth, and I, I hope this is no big surprise to you. It's no big surprise to me, because the angel Gabriel told Mary in verses 36 and 37 that Elizabeth was pregnant and that she would also give birth. We talked about that last week. We saw uh, that that was an amazing thing, given that Elizabeth had never had any children, and it's far past the stage of life to become pregnant. Think of this as the final confirmation for Mary. Elizabeth, if Elizabeth is truly pregnant, then absolutely uh, it was an angel, and uh, all that Gabriel had told her was true. It's a confirmation of that. So verse 41 tells us that these two ladies are in the middle of something quite extraordinary. Elizabeth hears the voice of Mary, and the baby inside of her, soon to be John the Baptist, leaps inside of her. That's amazing, just by hearing Mary's voice. Verse 41 also tells us that the Holy Spirit fills Elizabeth. Guys, these are two women that God is using to accomplish his purposes. Elizabeth tells Mary, blessed are you among women. Why would she say that? What was so special about Mary? I think Elizabeth is telling Mary that God has given her a wonderful gift. God has chosen her out of all the women in the world at the time. God has chosen Mary to be the mother of his son. The Virgin Mary was carrying inside of her the Messiah, the Messiah of God, the Savior of the world, the Son of the Most High God, the Creator of all things, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Need I go on? Mary has this child growing inside of her, and she's blessed because of it. Don't forget Gabriel's words to her in, in, uh, in verse 28. She was favored by God, and God was with her. These surely are blessings, guys. Mary was blessed because she believed in God. Mary was wise because, wise because she was obedient to God. Let me ask you this morning, what are you believing? What are you believing are you believing your fears? 
All those fears that pop up in your mind, all those worries, all those anxieties, are you believing your fears or are you believing what God says in his word? Are you believing today what God says in his word? To believe our fears, guys, is just dumb. It's just dumb. To believe what God has said is wise. That's what makes wise women. That's what makes wise men. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. But I have a word of warning here, a word of caution. Never confuse the wisdom of God with the wisdom of the world. Let me say that again because it's so very important. Never confuse the wisdom of God with the wisdom of the world. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3.19, The wisdom of the world is foolishness. The wisdom of the world is foolishness. You know, Samuel, Samuel Taylor Coleridge wrote uh, uh, in uh, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. He wrote about dying at sea. Even though he was surrounded by water, he wrote these words. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. This is because water everywhere was all salty. It was ocean water. It was useless to quench a dying mariner's thirst. In fact, the salt was so toxic, it was worse uh, than doing without water. Guys, the same is true with the wisdom of the world. The world's wisdom is actually a slow poison that kills the body, that kills the soul. It looks promising, but it leads to the way of death. I hope that you know we can have the same wisdom and the same blessing in our lives that Elizabeth had and that Mary had because of our faith in God. Our belief and our faith in God gives us the very same blessings that Elizabeth and Mary had. We are so blessed, guys. I'm sure you're like me. If you sat down and started writing out all the blessings, you'd run out of paper, the blessings that God has given to us. We should have no fear about this life because we know that our God is controlled. I have no fear of this pand pandemic because I know that God is controlled. Do I make wise decisions to keep myself safe? Of course I do. Do I make wise decisions to keep my son Michael safe, who was a high risk? Yes, of course I do. We make wise decisions to uh, keep ourselves safe. But we know, we know, wisdom tells us that God is in control. We should have hope in the future because of what Jesus has done for the place he's prepared for us. We have hope in our future. We should have peace in this life because we know God keeps his promises. And we know Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So we should have peace in this life. Let me close with a scripture from Proverbs. Proverbs uh, 318, if you wanted, if you wanted to uh, turn with me. I'm going to start at Proverbs 318. And let's just read that one together. It says this. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. Uh, in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her will fast be blessed. Wisdom, people. You want to be blessed? Be a man. Be the woman with godly wisdom. Got it? Father, we want to just thank you for our opportunity to be together and open your word together and, and uh, just talk about some of the women of Christmas. We've always studied the wise men of Christmas, but we, uh, we've forgotten maybe that there are wise women of Christmas as well. And so we want to be able to thank you um, uh, that we can learn from the wisdom of, of Elizabeth and the wisdom of Mary. And, and next week, we're going to find one more that we're going to learn from. Uh, the wisdom in her life as well. We ask you help help us take what we've learned today, Father, and apply it to our lives. That we don't that we we shun worldly wisdom, 
but we latch on to godly wisdom. So thank you, Father, for giving us wisdom. Thank you, Father, that your word tells us if we desire wisdom, all we have to do is pray and ask for it. So, Father, I'm asking for everyone that's watching this video, Lord, and uh, for myself as well, that we would be filled with godly wisdom, making wise choices, making wise decisions in our lives that will honor you and glorify you. I never like to let a day go, go by without uh, giving you an opportunity to uh, uh, accept Christ into your life. It's got to start there. You want godly wisdom, it's got to start with Jesus Christ coming into your life. It's a simple prayer. Just pray wherever you are, if you're in your bedroom, if you're in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you may be, God will hear you. Just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I don't understand it all, but I know you died for me and you came to forgive me of all of my sins. So I invite you in. I invite you to be my Lord, my Savior, the CEO, the manager of my life. I want to grow in you. I want to grow to become that person of godly wisdom that you desire for my life. So, Father, grow me, use me, and I'll give you the praise and glory for the rest of my life. For all of us, Lord, we do desire your wisdom. We thank you for your word that we can learn and apply it to our lives. May you be honored. May you be blessed. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here with me uh, this week. Again, uh, we have one more week before Christmas, and we're going to talk about one more uh, godly, wise woman of Christmas. And so I hope you come back uh, uh, and tune in next week as we talk about that. I want to remind you that um, uh, the church is still doing uh, ministry, and so continue to send in your tithes and offerings. Uh, you can give online. Uh, if you go to cornerstoneanddixon.com, um, uh, you can give online as well. Uh, I wish you could see the church right now. It's full of presents. We're, we're working on our Toys for Tots right now and wrapping gifts and presents and uh, just to see uh, some joy come to some needy children in our area. So um, continue to pray, pray, and pray. Pray for me. Pray for your elders. Pray for your deacons. Pray for your church and pray that uh, this pandemic will go soon. Encourage, encouraged by um, the uh, prospects of a, of a, a vaccine, hopefully uh, that will come soon, being approved now, and uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, fight this pandemic and keep it down. Anyway, I'm looking forward to the day we can gather back together, open up the church and worship together as well. But until that day, please stay safe, stay well, and may God bless.